Are you Instagram model? I'm sure the photos are very beautiful, but you've been taking photos of yourself here for two hours. We just were curious. We're making a documentary about interesting people in Paris who are trying to do something with their lives. So what are you trying to do? Do you enjoy your work? Yeah. Do you like the product? Yeah. Are you from Google? No. I'm from, uh, it's for the new phone. Where can I get the jacket though? I think people have a lot of conflicting ideas about ideas. On the one hand, people say ideas are a dime a dozen, execution is everything, which is both true and not true. It's very easy for me to come up with like 20 bad ideas. So ideas are a dime a dozen. Uh, what, what's your Instagram? Are you on Instagram? Let me see. Okay, what's your name? Why don't you try to make your account bigger? There's beautiful photos. What are you, what are you waiting for? <laughs> are you profitable? Yeah. Growing? Yeah. All right, I, I have a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Sorry? Knock-knock. You don't know knock-knock jokes? Never mind, never mind. Your first step is coming up with what I call execution ideas. Execution is not different from ideas. If you had a business you want to build, in order to execute something, first you have to have the ideas how to execute. If I say I'm going to build a new rocket ship, I, I don't know how to build a rocket ship. You know, I have to list what are my ideas for how I'm going to start executing on this. You would have a huge number of followers. Yeah, I know, but just like, I, I like the private. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, great. Well, it's nice meeting you. What's your name? Nice to meet you, Sherry. Sherry, I'm James. Nice hey. to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You're going back to US? Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs>
were you, what what did you say to yourself? Well, what does if I do this, what does success look like, and what does failure look like? Do you do a work through decision making like that? Yeah, except I thought that success back then was something else. I thought success for a TV show with me being very new. I thought two seasons was like, whoa, that's amazing. Twenty four seasons later. Hello, and- <laughs> exactly. Simple idea, sex, modeling, best show ever. Combine them. She pitched it to every producer. They all rejected her. They all said, Tyra, stick in your box. You don't have permission to come to our box. And she said to herself, I don't need permission. I've been on TV enough to know TV. Uh, I'm gonna combine the ideas and I'm gonna go ahead and produce America's Next Top Model. It's one of the most popular shows in television history. And everybody said no to her. Idea sex works. The Wright brothers, when did they develop their play? 1906, okay, in North Carolina. The U.S. government had a $2 million budget to develop the first plane, okay? But they wanted to, everybody thought you needed to develop a plane that never moved, that didn't wobble. So the Wright brothers, what was their background? They owned a bicycle store, and, but they wanted to make a plane, something that flew. And they were up against, again, a lot of different other companies, they were also up against the U.S. government that was spending $2 million in 1906 money. So whatever that is, a billion dollars now, I don't know. So the Wright brothers combined their knowledge of bicycles that wobbling is okay. You could still, you're not gonna crash just because you wobble. They combined that with the 1906 theories of aeronautics to create the airplane. That's why two guys who had no money and just a bicycle store were able to beat the U.S. government spending the equivalent of a billion dollars to make the first airplane. That's how, that's how powerful idea sex is. So we're about to go to the, the Louvre that, I don't know, millions of people visit each year. I went last night to show my daughter the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. But Leonardo da Vinci is, the, is one of the greatest examples of masterpiece after masterpiece based on idea sex. What did he do? He took this, cl- the most classic story of all time, The Last Supper of Jesus, where Jesus announces to all his disciples that one of them is going to betray him. He combined his knowledge of the Bible, his knowledge of painting, and his knowledge of the human body to create the most famous portrait of The Last Supper. Well, I think you know pretty quickly when an idea is no good. I'll tell two examples. One is I I made an IQ test and I wanted to make a dating website. Okay, this is before there was dating apps. It was like that website Hot or Not where you put a ranking. Do you think this person is hot or not? You rank from one to ten. And so I would show the picture of a person. Do you think that it's smart or not? Do you think this person is smart or stupid? And and everybody who signs up for this site has to take an IQ test. And so you put what you think, whether they're smart or stupid, and then you see their IQ. Meanwhile, you see their picture as well. You see how they scored on the IQ test. And so then you could send messages and it was almost like a dating site. But then I realized I did all the marketing, I did everything, nobody was using the site. Like nobody really cared whether someone was smart or not or whatever. People should be excited about an idea without you marketing it. Marketing only is the frosting on the cake. People should still enjoy the cake even without the frosting. Else it's a bad cake and the frosting's just hiding how bad it is. So that's the same thing with ideas and selling and marketing. If you've got the goods, you don't need to put that much effort into selling and marketing. And we see this all the time with any business. He's such a big thinker. Um, So he starts up here and then kind of brings it down, but it's hard to get him down. He's just always, big picture um, and so he's taught me how to even think beyond the current plan maybe the next step or two he's at seven or eight so you know uh, I guess what's, what's the classic way of talking about people that are really smart if they're really smart you kind of have an idea of how they do it and if they're a genius you kind of say I can see that they're doing it but I don't know how they do it I feel like he comes at everything from a different angle from from his book to his podcast you know in his book like choose yourself and all that right experience new things, that all makes you a better investor too. You need to see the world from different angles and not just like there. Like you need to get out of the box.
This is not the original Shakespeare and Company. The original one was started by a woman, Sylvia Beach. I think it was around 1919. And then after World War I, all of these expat writers made it almost their home bookstore. Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ezra Pound, James Joyce, Gertrude Stein, and Sylvia Beach, the owner, would lend them books, would help them get publishing deals. She helped Ernest Hemingway get his very first publishing deal. So this became like the center in a weird way. Here we are in Paris and London with an English writer name in the title. And this became like the, the home of 20th century American literature because Hemingway and Fitzgerald, John Dos Passos, all these great writers as expats started their writing careers right in the bookstore. Now, this one's not the original. This was started by another guy, but when Sylvia Beach retired, she said, take the name of Shakespeare and Company, but it's still the most famous bookstore in Paris. So as a writer, it's very inspirational for me to go here for the first time. What about if you start a book? So a book, by its nature, is gonna take a long time to finish, and then you don't know if it's going to be good or not. What I'll do is I'll write articles or things that are related to the content of the book and I'll put the articles all over the internet like I'll find different websites about that topic or I'll put it on general sites like Facebook or LinkedIn and I'll see the reactions and the engagement and that's like almost focus grouping the idea and I'll say to myself okay clearly people are interested in this if I expand this out into a book people will be interested Gary Steingart's a friend of mine. He'd be happy to know that his book is in Shakespeare and Company. Take a picture of it for him. Oh, and Haruku Murakami has a brand new book out. He's very interesting because he got his start translating Raymond Carver's books from English to Japanese, and he write his short stories in a very Raymond Carver kind of minimalist style. So Choose Yourself, which is my book that has sold over a million copies, it took me a long time to write. Why did I put that time in? Because I knew whenever I wrote an article about that topic, uh, and many of the topics that are mentioned in Choose Yourself, it would have the highest engagement of any article I'd ever written in the past. So I knew if I kind of collected those ideas and wrote them into the form of a book, that book itself would be successful. So I was able to focus group the individual ideas of, of the book. I like this title because you always want to start off with something you're afraid to admit. So I might regret this. It's about that. If you're afraid to admit something, then it's going to be kind of it's like you're telling a secret. And everybody wants to lean in and listen to a secret. So she basically says she's going to be revealing something as opposed to lecturing. I hate books that are like, you must do this. This, she might even regret what she wrote. Let's see the first line. Before I make a decision, I tend to think about all the possible outcomes. The tendency, unfortunately, mainly includes obsessing over the ways in which things can go terribly off course. So now you know something is going to go terribly off course in this book. We all want to hear about people who go off course and come back. Rodney Dangerfield, this is more an example of reinvention. He was a stand-up comic. He wasn't doing so well as a stand-up comic. How did he decide to quit? I don't really know. Probably because he wanted to raise a family and, and he wasn't making any money at all. Rodney Dangerfield. There's no reason to continue for years doing something where you have to raise a family and you're having no success. So he became an aluminum siding salesman for decades. And then finally, in middle age, he decided, you know what? I'm gonna try stand-up comedy again. And he did, and he had this whole perspective of decades of life experience, and he became one of the best stand-up comedians of all time. That's a great example where sometimes you can go back to your ideas that failed, but with additional life experience, he developed a unique voice. What was his unique voice? What's the first thing you think of when you think of Rodney Dangerfield? You think, I get no respect. And every single joke that he ever told comes out of that unique 
perspective that he had for himself on life. He didn't have that unique perspective before, so he had to, he, he had to fail, he had to do something else, and then he had to come back to it. Never be afraid to come back to your passions, even if you fail the first time, but give yourself a chance to, to breathe and grow and let the idea breathe in your subconscious, sometimes for years or decades, which is obviously what he did. By the way, he also then bought a comedy club so that he could put himself on the stage. So he knew how to kind of get stage time given his experience as a businessman. Again, idea sex, business combined with his passion for comedy equaled the club Dangerfield, which catapulted him to fame. So when I built a company, I didn't automatically know off the top of my head how to build this company. I had to write down, here's what the company looks like. Here's what the first page looks like. Here's what the customer experience is. Here's what the sign-up page is. Here's what the search looks like. And then I have to figure out, well, an execution step is I'm gonna spec it out and put it on freelancer.com. The idea muscle is a muscle like any other. It'll atrophy if you don't use it. You practice every day, and within six months, then you can finally say, oh, my idea muscle has been exercised. Now maybe I can start coming up with good ideas. But I understand the need to pursue your dreams. I mean, I tried very hard. I thought when I was a kid, I'd pursue my dreams. I wanted to be a computer scientist, but I got thrown out of graduate school. Mr. PhD got thrown out of graduate school. I started work at HBO. I wanted to make a television show. I failed at that. I, I had two great shows that I was already filming and they rejected both of them. So I failed at that. I started a, a company, built it up, sold it for $15 million. But then I bought the biggest apartment in New York City. And then I lost all of my money, lost that apartment. The apartment got taken away from me. I got so depressed. I ended up practically suicidal. So that's when I would walk a couple of miles. I wanted to be healthy. Then I would sit down and I would write down 10 ideas a day. Exercise your idea muscle to be an, a super idea machine, a nuclear idea machine. Just ex I write 28 years later, I still write 10 ideas a day. Just like if you got into a little accident, you would need physical therapy to make your muscles work again. You need physical, you need like creative therapy to get your creative muscles working again. And so I just write, started writing 10 bad ideas a day down. But bit by bit, I started to get excited again about some of the ideas I had. I then used idea sex to come up with even better ideas that I could write about, that I could learn from, that become personal to me, personal stories that create value for my life and then hopefully others. Like I came up with 10 ideas of books to write, 10 ideas of investment strategies I should use, 10 ideas of businesses I could start. Two businesses that have worked, how do you combine them to make an even better business? So when I created the business stock picker, which I sold for $10 million. Oh, social media site plus finance equals stockpicker.com. Boom. Created the site, millions of users, sold for $10 million four months after I launched it. You don't have to come up with a brand new original idea all the time. Idea sex is really important. And here's how you could try it. Come up with a list of good ideas today. Come up with a list of mediocre ideas tomorrow. Now the next day, day number three, combine the two lists. Always say this plus this equals this and see what happens.